Namaste. So we continue with the Collected Works of Sri Aurobindo, Volume 28, which is the first part of Letters on Yoga. Letters on Yoga are in four parts, one, two, three, four. And we can compare Sri Aurobindo's major works and Letters on Yoga in this way, that the major works, which includes all the books written during the Arya period, before 1921, so they give us a uh, drone eye view. I mean, bird's eye view. Now we can replace it with drone drone eye view. So they they give us the large landscape. So you are going through the mountains, and you have this mountain peak, and somebody says this is that peak, and this is the other peak, and you see some little bit of the contours that are around. So this is how the drone eye view is given in these. So you have an overview the entire mountain. But supposing you want to go through the mountain, walk the terrain, then we need every little detail. It's not enough to know, ki, okay, this is Mount Everett, this is Mount K2, this is Kanchanjanga. Now when you are actually walking, like even Mount Everest, there are a number of uh, uh, you know side lanes through which you can climb. Lanes is a way of saying. <laughs> so these small details which are so important for real practice of the yoga, are there in Letters on Yoga. If one would ask me what is my take on, uh, I mean, I put Savitri in a different category altogether. Savitri is a must for anyone who is taken to this yoga because it's a mantric poem. Mother has said it's a mantra of transformation. It doesn't matter whether we understand it or don't understand it. We should read it simply because the mantra has its effect even when we don't understand. Similarly, for the philosophical oriented, the mind is having too many questions. So, for silencing the mind, the life divine is wonderful. The synthesis of yoga gives us a broad understanding of the principles behind the yoga. But in, in actual practice, we need something more. We need to know how to sleep, how to eat. We are like little babies in this yoga. What are the do's and don'ts, if there are any? Because this yoga moves in a very vast freedom. Uh, it's not a standardized cut path for everybody. Wake up at this time, do these many hours of meditation. So for each one, it is uh, it unfolds itself differently. So one may feel very lost. It's like mountain looks wonderful when you see from afar. But when you come near it, it can be intimidating. And that's what happens to many people who read basically the major works. So when they read the major works, it's so wonderful. But when they want to enter into practice, they find it intimidating because it's something like even the ocean. It's so wonderful. But if you want to step into it, after a few steps, you don't know where you are going. Or to take a lesser example, uh, the, the Ganga uh, is so nice. Then you have so many ghats, each ghat with its own uh, beauty, its majesty, its own story. And then when you enter into it, so, letters on yoga give us all these details. So, for the practice of the yoga, it is, and also for the background, because Sri has uh, discussed through these letters every possible way that we can understand even the metaphysical principles behind it. So, it gives us all those minute details that we want to know. So, letters on yoga, volume 1, 2, 3, 4, and combine it with letters on the mother, and letters of Sri on himself is a complete thing. After that, we don't need really to read anything else, both for understanding and for the walking of the path. Savitri, as I said, is the mantra of transformation. Like prayers and meditation, it should be part of a daily, uh, not part, part doesn't look a, a very good word. So let me uh, spin it a little, not part, but path. So reading Savitri is a path. Reading prayers and meditation is a path because it equips us, its vibrations help us to walk the journey. So with this little background, we will read some of the letters from volume 1. As we know, volume 1 is basically about the metaphysical aspects of the yoga. Uh, but in a way that we can see many of these things uh, in a practical way. But main practice we'll find in volume 2 and volume 3 and volume 4. So here, for example, Sri speaks of the concentric and vertical systems. So normally we, we have this idea, human beings, so all human beings are same. 
so this is obviously because humanity is defined by the fact that it has become aware of something deeper than the surface. Animals don't know. There is nothing or very little of subjective life. There is. There is in them even a psychic spark. But very little of the subjective life because the mind is not developed. The, the vital is there but mainly towards its uh, manifesting, expressing its instincts. But in human beings a subjective dimension opens. This is one of the beautiful things about human beings. We can think, we can feel, we can sense things inwardly. We have all our, um, you know, so many sensitivities which arise, we can love. And so many sensitivities which arise because of the awareness of a subjective self, which is not only real, but as we grow and develop, it becomes much more real than the outer physical personality. So in human beings, when we go behind the surface personality, there is an inner being. So there is an outer being. In, in a very early stage of humanity, one is aware of nothing else but this outer being. So an average person, if he asks that, what are you thinking? So he'll talk about the next meal. And if you ask after the next meal, what are you thinking? Ab so jate hain. <laughs> Morning utke, what are you thinking? Breakfast kya banega? <laughs> so this is how, it's more or less like, you know, an animal routine tied. Nothing wrong or right about it, but that's how it is. But, as we develop, we begin to become aware of things which are inside. So that's an inner being behind the outer. And this inner being is something in a certain sense. It is what is the real man. It is something to be nurtured, cultivated. Many times there is also a dissonance. The inner being develops but the outer does not change. It is the last to change. Yet we must develop the inner being and as we develop it, it begins to ultimately impress upon the outer, its inner growth. So this is called as the concentric system. So there is the outer being and there is the inner being. Inner being is open to universal currents of forces, which, which is such a practical thing. For instance, outwardly, I may think I am not meeting a person. But if I am thinking of a person, I am in contact. And this knowledge was developed and used to what extent? This is the basis of much of occultism. You think about a person and direct your thought. You think about a person and direct your feelings. So all this has its effect. We don't realize that uh, things we have felt, hoped for, aspired for. And these things have an impact upon great Traveling across great distances because for the physical body I am here. Many people feel, how does it matter what I am thinking, what I am feeling? But it is the real thing. It is the real ground in which yoga is taking place. So this is the inner being and behind the inner being is the inmost being which is the soul, the sacred space where the divine is there holding the soul like a baby in his arms. So this is the concentric system. And we have to go from the surface right to the depths. Through the inner being, first we'll encounter the inner being. We'll become aware of our inner mind, inner vital, inner physical. And then we come in contact with the psychic being. It's described in Savitri uh, beautifully. This journey into the inner countries, then the triple soul forces and then the finding of the soul. But this is also a vertical system which we see in Traveller of the Worlds. So vertical system means right now we are living largely in the mind, hopefully. Otherwise, a lot of us are stationed in the vital. Um, the, the average natural man is largely stationed in the vital, living for simply vital satisfaction. What Sri Aurobindo calls as the desired soul. And we use the mind but largely to gratify the vital or justify the vital. So we do all kinds of things and we give it a nice, neat justification like a good wrapper. Nice cover, gift cover, but inside it's all dark. So the mind plays these games. But then a time comes when we become aware of the mind in this true sense. It's the mana prana sharir neta. It is supposed to be the leader. So the day it realizes that I am supposed to be the leader. So it begins to master the vital. It begins to reign in the vital impulses. That's what makes truly a human being. Through moral, ethical, whatever means, it reigns in. But this is not the summit. There are beyond the mind ranges of consciousness. Sri speaks about them. 
that second block first block is mind and below second block is higher mind illumined mind intuitive mind this is the second block through which we ascend and as we ascend our understanding begins to change because we start looking at things differently from a new vantage point new doors of possibilities begin to open in us and then comes the fourth block which is the over mind layer so in over mind it is it is the peak through which human consciousness can climb and so it looks the ultimate and shubhendra says that many yogis stop there thinking it is the ultimate but the ultimate is when we go one step further and which is where we have the four supernals four absolute normally we speak of three supernals sachidanand sat chit and ananda but the fourth is super mind and shubhendra says why the mystics in the past could not get this fourth supernal is because when they saw the over mind they felt it is what is sachidanand beyond it is only that utter state but in the super mind because super mind differentiates all these like the seven rays of the sun so this is how we spoke last time about this hierarchy so this is the concentric system and the vertical system so shubhendu writes there are in fact two systems simultaneously active in the organization of the being and its parts so right now this organization is a chaos because the fellow which is the rational mind is more often like a as shubhendu says the householder sits with his hand on the head and doesn't know how to control on one side are unruly children there are a lot of guests there are a host of forces which are moving in and out so it becomes like a public square and doesn't know how to so first step of governance is to discover the psychic being and hand over the charge to that one is concentric a series of rings or sheaths with the psychic at the center so there are people who say that well it's like an onion peel at the core there is nothing i have a impression this is basically a misunderstanding because there is a corresponding stories in the upanishad where the uh, guru tells the disciple he wants to know what is that source from which creation comes so he speaks about a fruit and then he says what you find inside is a seed then he says split the seed and he splits the seed and then he says split that further and he says well there is nothing he says that is the core now this core is nothing only in the sense it does not correspond to any of our current understanding because many people when they are told that psychic being chooses the birth so they wonder why then somebody is born in poverty <laughs> well the psychic being may precisely choose that if it takes it that this is much better the psychic being of a king may choose in the next life as the mother says the life of an ordinary peasant because it realizes as a king i was bonded labor a king is much more bound he can't as i said get down from the car and uh, or whatever chariot and have golgappas by the road side uh, you surround nowadays even bigger prison because you are in z plus plus security so he may choose the psychic you may choose a very ordinary life apparently because it feels this is how i'll progress in a much more way so the psychic being nothing of our ego self and desire self corresponds to the intimations of the psychic so shubhendra speaks about this another is vertical and ascension and descent descent is unique to this yoga as we ascend something of those forces descend and change earth nature it is like when people go in space they discover the possibility of the internet and those forces those like now people are this probe is moving near the sun which near the sun is some god knows how many thousand miles away but nevertheless 56000 miles <laughs> uh, so but still that is near the sun so from there it picks up those uh, new possibilities those radiations those rays and who knows in future we'll have new technology which is governed by the sun there is a whole um, in indian yogic system something called as surya siddhant it's based it even calculates the speed of light pretty close pretty close i think maybe that is more correct 187000 miles per second otherwise it's 186500 something so there were there are ways and means which we are not aware of as we descend we become aware of new possibilities 
like a flight of steps a series of superimposed planes with the super mind over mind as the crucial nodus of the transition beyond the human into the divine for this transition if it has it is to be at the same time a transformation there is only one way one path first there must be a conversion inwards a going within to find the inmost psychic being and bring it out to the front disclosing at the same time the inner mind inner vital inner physical parts of the nature next there must be an ascension a series of conversions upwards and a turning down to convert the lower parts now shubhita makes it very clear first thing is to find the psychic being if without finding the psychic being the ascension takes place meaning thereby the lid opens the forces of the higher order descending into a lower nature which is not prepared by the psychic can create havoc there may be this feeling that i am an avatar so there, there are aham brahmasmi so now there have been yogis who have tried to force open the way and if you force open the way when the aadhar is not pure if at all the way opens many time people have all kinds of some experiences in the subliminal and believe they have come arrive but that apart but if it really opens it can completely upset the system we, we see that in the life of gopinath kaviraj who, who wrote this book on kundalini and the mother says 99% of the time nothing will happen you think you are having kundalini awakening all that mind is a big power of formation but 1% if it opens by the force of will without the necessary purification it can be devastating because human system cannot take so that's why the psychic purification or the psychic transformation which is a better word and then we have the further conversion so here there is just one line one psychicizes the whole lower, na lower nature so as to make it ready for the divine change so we'll read about psychicization but basically it means it is priming the nature to the divine it primes so automatically it distinguishes the divine from the undivine it doesn't have to be taught all that it automatic the nature is primed it automatically opens to the light and the right it automatically seeks when psychicized nature automatically seeks the divine touch and it can discover it it is not fooled by appearances you can't just you know have a dand and um, this kind of dress and dress like a sadhu baba and speak big things psychic will instantly know that this is kaladevi and therefore that's why even mata sita story you see mata sita she offers to the fire and she assumes her avidyamayi roop that's how ravan could enter the kutia there is no lakshman rekha incidentally in valmiki ramayana i'm sure people know it <laughs> so but he could enter as a guest and guests were invited and he comes dressed as a sadhu so every but the psychic will automatically discern that's why it primes the nature when there is a psychic change and suggestion comes that i am an avatar you will throw it miles away and look inside where is this ego thing coming in first thing is to find the psychic and all the rest is later on ascend descent everything otherwise it's a dangerous thing and how to find the psychic that he will will talk about at length in the other volumes but basically it is love surrender bhakti for the divine it is its hallmark there are two things which are the hallmark of psychic chain a seeking for truth good and beauty satyam shivam sundaram and the other hallmark is which is the next step one is the secular way truth good and beauty and the other is more direct which is love surrender and bhakti for the divine if that is there that means the psychic change is taken place so lot of people who try to compare system shubhin has repeatedly said don't compare because there are uh, different angles even when the same word is used so there are different angles of vision in this only there is a letter where he says don't it's not good to compare these systems uh, because it's like you approach from this side and see a little angle and you think this is it but somebody who has seen the whole thing from every side will give you a different picture for instance we know that vigyan mein i have read uh, somebody who wrote an article that it's the higher intellect that means all of us are already supramentalized being anybody with higher intellect <laughs> whereas vigyan mein is the original cause 
When you look at mind, higher intellect is not the cause of creation. It is part of the result of creation. It cannot be the cause of, neither buddhi can be the cause of creation. Buddhi is a discerning power. The cause has to be something else. So time, space and causality, that original cause, the golden womb of all things. So that's what is. So again, people try to compare that the psychic being in the heart. So they go into the, this is a big stumbling block in Sri yoga to understanding Sri Sometimes people who have read less, it's much to a great advantage. Because instantly, I say, Gita, mein, where is it written about the psychic being? Then they extrapolate. And the extrapolation is that the uh, divine in the Sharbhav is the psychic being. And Sri clearly says, no. Okay, the divine seated in the heart. No, that is the imminent divine. There is no mention of psychic being except in a way of the individual jiva, para, prakriti, jiva, bhuta. But that in Shobindu's terminology will be central being. The Jivatma, that's true, born of the Divine Mother. So he says, they, the psychic being and the divine presence in the heart are quite different things. The psychic being is one's own individual soul being. It is not the divine, though it has come from the divine and develops towards the divine. It It carries within itself the essence, seed of the divine. Because divine is eminent in whole creation. Even on Mangal Graya, you have the divine in mind. Wherever there is creation, there is the divine within creation. That is the Sharobhav. But psychic being is specific to earth. Because it's an evolutionary aspect of the divine. And then he specifies, it is constantly in contact with the imminent divine. The divine secret in the individual. And then, of course, he speaks about the best road through the psychic to the supramental. And um, then, of course, the problem of English language, where all kinds of words are used. Then there is another letter. There is a difference between the psychic and the self. The self is the Atman above, which is one in all. Remains always wide, free, pure, untouched by the action of life in its ignorance. It is of this self that we find words in the Katopanishad. Suryo yata, Suryo yatha, Sarva lokasya chakshu, Nalipyate chakshushe bahya dosha. It is untouched, unstained. Even the psychic being is pure, but in a different sense. It identifies with the ignorance takes on their experience. So it's a much more dynamic thing. The self is one and the same. It is not something individual. Its nature is peace, freedom, light, wideness, ananda. So self-realization literally must be accompanied by these experiences. State of inner freedom, wideness, light, ananda. These are the four main attributes. Peace. The psychic antaratma is the individual being which comes down into life and travels from birth to birth and feels the experiences and grows by them till it is able to join itself with the free atman above. So then one can, after discovery of the individual self, one realizes the universal self. Then they are, it realizes that they are one and the same. And then one can discover the same thing in everyone and everybody. The psychic is found in the depths of the heart, behind the heart center. Whereas the self has no separate place, it is everywhere. This is so beautiful. Love, joy and happiness come from the psychic. One shop, one shop, uh, store shopper, whatever whatever it is called. (laughs) Want love, joy, happiness, true knowledge. Peace, find the psychic being. (laughs) The self gives peace or a universal ananda, static or dynamic. So remedy is there already. Again, psychic realization. What is the sign that one has realized the psychic? So psychic realization brings bhakti. Self-giving, the urge is to give oneself to the divine. It doesn't matter. This psychic realization, what beautiful poetry. Mero to gir dhar gopal dusro na koi. 
and this is not uh, intellectually woven words she is married she belongs to family yet the truth of her being is that mere to gur dhar gopal dusro na koi so when this state comes shyam mane chakar rakho ji beautiful psychic states because in that state one wants to give 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 endlessly and one realizes there is always something to give because one can never give completely so that is the psychic state it brings bhakti self giving surrender even in human love if there is a psychic touch its sign is that there is a sense of giving the moment there is calculation wanting possessing dominating controlling whatever is called nowadays jealousy possessiveness the psychic is begin to be overpowered now these things are necessary in normal life as a defense <laughs> that's why low, the thorns of defense of lower nature that's how it is called but otherwise the urge of the psychic is when it loves it loves with completeness and it gives fully i i believe such a love in human beings women are capable that's what because the psychic they operate more from the heart men more and more they are here they somehow enjoy weaving word they can write very nice uh, letter but <laughs> for a woman she lives that truth without ability to speak it but this doesn't mean that the door of the psychic should be barred to men all the more they must discover it the sooner the better the faster the better life will be but when it emerges then no human being then divine and the divine in all but till it has emerged it expresses through the higher vital through all these emotions but when it comes it doesn't look for human joys and human love it gives to the divine or to the divine in whatever form it may come turning of all the movements godward the stress all the movements everything it turns godward discrimination and choice of all that belongs to the divine truth it has the true discernment mind can easily mislead it is misled by appearances as somebody says no ki uh, west mein to bahut common hai i'll translate in english that uh, char shlok bol do to bas guru ji hai you know all that you need is to say some sanskrit shloka people start believing he is some great person even if the ucharan is ashudh but forget the ucharan the inner sense is completely missing but the psychic will discern it will not go by bada shuddh ucharan hai therefore it knows the difference between sheer panditya and the authentic experience and realization discrimination and choice of all that belongs to the divine truth good beauty rejection of all that is false evil ugly discordant so you see what the psychic does it's described as a hansa swan which uh, which has the near sheer vivek near sheer vivek the ability to distinguish water from milk it is said that uh, the swan can i mean i don't know whether it's true or not but it can drink the milk and leave the water aside but subtly true of the psychic that it will extract the needed experience it will not shun things but it will draw that grain of gold and leave the rest so in in everything it rejects what it rejects all that is false evil ugly discordant it loves harmony and whatever creates disorder discordant it stays away because uh, um, impulse of the psychic union through love and sympathy with all existence when the psychic comes out automatically you feel the sweetness and uh, a kind of oneness with all kind sympathy care tender affection fidelity they are all psychic movements so one can distinguish uh, these things even in human love openness to the truth of the self and the divine so beautifully in one little sentence he has explained so it's like how will i know when that my soul has come out <laughs> apart from the fact that you'll be identified with it you'll be conscious of immortality but one will know if these things are happening inside if they are not happening then don't go just by suddenly seeing a vision or hearing a voice and all that kind of experiences does the psychic feel sad shobindu says the psychic does not suffer like the vital or body it has not pain or anguish or despair it will never despair because it knows the divine is present 
the sign that the psychic is activated is that even most impossible situations one knows that divine hai nikal lenge <laughs> all that it says is ma but when does it feel sad not in situations which seem impossible but when its own mind life and body are playing the fool so that's where shivinda says it has a kind of quiet sadness psychic sorrow of yearning when it feels which it feels when things go against the divine it's not a despair kind of sad sweet sadness lord come change this in me it's stifling come change this in the environment there's so much disharmony so much discordance it will yearn to bring peace and light and beauty and goodness and harmony in this world so when does it feel sad when the obscurity and obstacles are too heavy when the mind vital and physical follow after other things inside says ma 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 outside says ma 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 so there is a problem there <laughs> you can have, you have to change the matra you can either have ma or you have ma <laughs> so this matra change psychic does <laughs> it immediately corrects when evil and falsehood and darkness seem to be too strong for the light but it does not despair but feels that these things ought not to be and the psychic yearning for it to be otherwise becomes so intense that it is felt as if something akin to sadness that it should change so it's not sadness the way we experience sad sadness but something where there is a yearning to change and therefore that intensity grows so solution of all problems is intensify the psychic flame that is the secret even for change of circumstances i have seen this they can completely i think i had shared this bhajan the other time i can share today uh, one of those moments when life you know suddenly brings before you a whole world of as if darkness so the lines that came which were shared like a bhajan ma tumhare garbh mein phir se samana chahta hu bas teri pehchan lekar janm lena chahta hu because you realize that there are parts which they should completely be drenched with the divine flavor divine dyed in the divine color lali tere lal ki jit dekho tit lal lali dekhan main gayi main bhi ho gayi lal people who are have this psychic uh, awakening they will see it much more often in others sometimes people ask me that alok da please tell me my defects i, I just can't help it i can't see it like this i say you are ignoring these defects i said no i am not ignoring i am blind i can't help it <laughs> i don't see them as defect because it's so true it it vanishes because you see that divine element that's all and you see the divine possibility of course there is darkness but that's not what catches your attention it's like uh, you know if you are looking for authentic gold or uh, diamond and if you know the difference the moment you go to a shop you will see that's that's it you can't be cheated ki ye diamond le lijiye 2000 ka milega you know bhaiya nahi milta nahi milta wo dekh ke you will know it ki this is not the authentic stuff and authentic stuff you will know it even if it is covered with cloaks of darkness you will see that so this is how he speaks about the psychic being then of course we have this idea of atma god no so many movies they have made on atma <laughs> i don't know what all movies even recently they made some movie god knows i some kind of vicious interest in horror okay casper was still okay at least it was a friendly ghost and some movies like chamatkar and <laughs> more recent was amitabh bachchan <laughs> some ghost movie i forget they are nice but otherwise ghost movies are not they are dull and drab but there he says the ghost of a man is of course not his soul we should be very clear so what is a ghost it is either he is a very weak creature ghosts are not people to be scared they are scared of us that's why you see they live only in places which are uh, abandoned haunted houses <laughs> when human beings come then naturally they first want to drive you away because you have occupied their territory and if you are afraid then you are gone but if you tell them bhaiya tere se kuch nahi lena dena to shanti se you stay where you want to stay 
I had when I had moved into this house, people said there is a ghost there, ghost there. Don't go, don't go. I know this. We'll have great fun. So one week it came. I said, see, I have nothing to do with you. You be quiet. So <laughs> then I knew where it is coming from. So I prayed. I said, see, shanti, shanti, shanti. Then I prayed to mother. Mother, there are these disembodied beings floating around. Please give them peace. And then there was peace hereafter. So they are they are very afraid of us, but somehow we have this uh, mansikta mind that we get scared because they are scared. So their contact brings fear. It's like somebody who is terrified. If you come in touch with such a person who is full of fear, so you also feel the fear. Whereas you meet a person who is full of courage, you suddenly feel encouraged. <laughs> so ghost is what is the ghost? It is either the man appearing in his vital body. Especially after death, in the initial period, it can happen that uh, in the vital sheath, someone may come and it may appear. It's not a very pleasant sight. So I remember seeing my own mother when she had passed away and said, "This is I knew this. This she is in the vital sheath. She needs to be dissolved." But it was not a very pleasant sight to see her. Uh, there is a difference. I I don't want to describe what it is. It's not horror or horrifying, but there is a difference, and the vibrations are not very fine. So I just simply said, "Ma, ma, ma, ab shanti se jao." <laughs> so after that, but it it is it is the vital body, or it is a fragment of his vital structure that is seized on by some force or being of the vital world for its own purpose. Like now, the accident took place, so people who were they were writing the uh, writing that the atmosphere is horrible. It was very nice. I don't know who ever did it. What an intelligent way! First time. Earlier, I don't know. Long time, I haven't travelled by rail. But earlier, if there is an accident, you will see a bogey, and I say, "Yeah, accident was there." But this time, they had barricaded the place, which is just the right thing to do, so that you don't come in contact. Even sometimes, physical barrier helps, because they are disem. They are looking for poor fellows. Now they are looking for some food. They are looking for some consciousness where they can have. A, they have not completed their human experience, and that vital is disembodied bombs. Sudden accidents. So these are the places where these dis defragmented structures, and that has a force multiplier. Post during Corona, it's a force multiplier. So all these dead, and then there is fear. So they keep on attacking these fragments. Original virus has done its work and gone, but these start attacking, making one fall sick, full of fear, and then the life force is sucked out. So it's a different knowledge altogether, and now here Shubhendra says, for normally the vital being with its personality exists after the dissolution of his physical body for some time only. It's a few days, and I believe I don't know whether they are doing it or not. Normally at such places they should do some kind of a prayer and yagna. But I was very happy to see our railway minister at least invoking the grace when the first train was passing. It was something very beautiful gesture. This is the way to do it. Afterwards, it passes away into the vital plane, where it remains till the vital sheath dissolves. For this only the shad ceremony was done. But Sri Aurobindo says it's not necessary. Just pray. We just read Savitri, and that's enough. Next one passes in the mental sheath to some mental world. But finally, the soul leaves its mental sheath also and goes to its place of rest. If the mental is strongly developed, then the mental being can remain, and so also can the strongly developed vital, provided they are organized by and centered around the true psychic being. They can share the immortality of the psychic. I think last uh, uh, class on immortality we were reading about this only, but for that it must be developed and organized around the psychic. It, it shared the immortality of the psychic. So such a mental being or a vital being can continue to operate. And when there is a next body, it can just drop in. Hey, here I am. You, you had left me here. I am safe and sound. Or it can continue to help others much more powerfully because it's no more freed by the shackles of the body. But ordinarily, this does not happen. There is a dissolution of the mental and vital as well as the physical parts, and the soul in rebirth assumes a new mind, life, and body, and not as is often supposed. A replica of its old nature self. So when somebody, अरे ये दादा जी आ गए हैं, अरे उसको please let him lead a new life. Don't remind him of दादा जी. Even if he remembers, he'll be miserable. Or he may just 
feel a little bit sympathetic when you become aware of your past life and know oh, this fellow was <laughs> if the nice family member still it's okay otherwise you may feel miserable so there is a reason why all this is erased and we should never even if it is true are ye to dada ji aaye let him go to the future why should he go back to the past he is not going to lead the life of his grandparent that's why the soul has taken a new adventure so shurvindo says such a repetition would be meaningless and useless even looking for those traits those traits are nothing but certain hereditary elements we all know that grandparents tra this transmission usually takes place like that oh he has certain traits which are similar to the grandfather so therefore the soul of the grandfather has come no that's lack of understanding of heredity it operates certain traits do come in tendencies come in but that's not because there is a rebirth of that particular soul it may be very comforting to the people around but it is not comforting to the soul if he grows up and keeps thinking i am my dada ji who is in this new body set him free so shivinder says he wants a new adventure an evolutionary growth of the soul in nature ha huh. he says such a repetition would be meaningless and useless and would defeat defeat the purpose of rebirth at the same time the soul preserves the impression of what was essential in its past lives and personality so what is soul impression you go to ashram and you say ha ah, ghar hai ab ye to nobody has told you ye ghar hai yes. you feel drawn this is the past impression suddenly you stand before the photograph of the mother and से बहुत पुरानी सदियों की जान पहचान है ये है रियल बिछड़ा हुआ मिलना यू मीट समबडी हुम दे पीपल हुए आई हैव सीन फर्स्ट टाइम दे हैव कम विद इवन विदाउट एनी स्पिरिचुअल और इवन ए रिलीजियस बैंड एंड दे क्राई एंड आई आस्ट वन लेडी वाज अबाउट टू डाई सी से आई डोंट नो व्हाई आई क्राइड सो आई सेड व्हाट हैपन सी आई जस्ट फेल्ट आई हैव कम होम नथिंग So this where the soul suddenly feels and gets drawn. So that's how, but it may not recollect the exact memory, but it knows purani jan pehchan hai. So this is how it is, the impressions. Then of course there are plenty of letters on the system of worlds, and there is a whole thing on the chakras. As we know, what are chakras? There is nothing like um, individual nature is. Uh, only for practical purposes nature by its nature is universal and we take the comparison of the okay there is a very nice song dhoop ko kisne bandha but i may say ah is yahan par dhoop achhi aa rahi hai aapki dhoop nahi hai sabki hai don't put a meter on this okay see this is my see no sir so it is because of a limitation like, typical example is ganges ye wala ghat and wo wala ghat but the ganges is the same so same way all nature is ultimately universal but through the ego self which is a mechanism there is a selection made out of the universal and that selection we call as my nature and there is a purpose why this selection takes place based on the need of a certain experience heredity everything comes into play but then at some point it is open to the whole universal nature but we don't experience it because there is a knot it's like putting a dam and this knot has been put out of you know there is a reason why it is put because if you are flooded by the universal inner being can open to the universal we will be literally flooded we won't be able to contain it's like opening the dam so it's very interesting how it is put this dam very simple you must have gone and seen when you ask for idli summer i mean summer and when these people on the road side they they make a bundle and give you chutney no so what do you say what is that got to do with the chakras well you see how they tie the thread they don't put a knot They just do, 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 then they just do and give it to you and you wonder i used to wonder that ye khulega nahi but it difficult to open even at home you are trying to eat disentangle but you see they have never really tied a knot and it is shut inside the same way nature does concentric circle it enters into kind of whirl like movement 
and then this side is universal and here is the individual. So at all the domains you have this knot and you have the chakras. They are in the inner being, not in the soul, not in the spine, certainly not. I mean, don't, but in the spine you will see correspondence because there is a subtle correspondence between the body and the subtle being. So function of the chakras, seven in number, the thousand petal lotus on the top of the head, sahasrar, in the middle of the forehead, the agya chakra, then Shobindo describes all of them. Agya chakra is will, vision, dynamic thought. This is where it is. And actually it is anywhere, but people make it like brumadra. But it's anywhere in the head, it's at the, in the center of the head, in the middle of the forehead. Throat center, externalizing mind. Heart lotus, emotional center, the psychic is behind it. That's why it's so easy to approach it through the emotions. But there is a difference. There is the emotional center and the psychic being. But through the emotions, it's much easy to you know, discover it. Mind will take you into the jalebi path. And the psychic will take you through the, the heart will take you through the straight path. Navel, higher vital, proper. This is higher vital, proper. Below navel, lower vital. So many a times lower vital forces they attack and even the organs in this area belong to the mainly lower vital activities. And uh, they are, uh, one can experience fear rising from the pao thar thar kaapne lagte, you know, we use the expression. Even there is a kind of music which makes your legs shake. Whereas when you see uh, here the more classical music, your legs are here, but your head is moving. Notice how it has an influence. When you hear a classical, you can't stand up and start dancing. I mean dancing Bharat Natyam, I am not talking about Bharat Natyam. But that Bhut Nach, which is called as dance, Halloween dance. So, you know, <laughs> that's what is called as dance. Uh, no, I know this Bhut Nach because once in uh, school we had done, three of us, so <laughs> youngsters. <laughs> Young money, but uh, 10, 11. So we, we, I'm dance karenge, sa? some song, the Maradam, so we are doing guitar dance. And everybody said, was it a dance or a boot nach? <laughs> so that is stuck to my memory. Yes, that's a boot nach. Bharat Natyam is different. Bharat Natyam is, of course, the whole being, but mainly eyes and mudras. Look at it. The feet are steadying. Feet are meant to steady yourself. And there are, of course, gestures, but mainly it is eyes and the mudras. So you see how, how the difference between different kinds of music. So this is the place where the lower vital forces come. And below it is muladhar, the physical. So based on the organ which is diseased, we can know where the forces, what kind of forces are attacking us. I won't go into it detail. Gory details. <laughs> but it is true that most diseases, if you look at it, many diseases will afflict the organs which are in the abdomen as well as the lower back ache. If you really see, it's so common. And of course, tumors and cancers because, you know, tumors especially because of excessive greed in the nature. So it can take place. Brain is the central organ. So any disease can use that part when it, this tendency occupies even the thought. So it's a whole science in itself, this knowledge of the centers, and Sri speaks of each of them. The thousand petal lotus is the center of higher will and knowledge. So it's only with ascension that this opens. Forehead is will, vision, mental dynamism. So all this he explains. And then he says something interesting. In the process of our yoga, the centers have each a fixed psychological use and general function, which base of their, all their special powers and functioning. So he speaks about all the functioning and he says very clearly in our yoga we don't do a willed awakening of the kundalini through bij mantras. This is what is done in the other yogas because then you can escape from the nature. Nature will be in chaotic state. As you know some of the tantric literature mentions, Sankracharya himself mentions, Jadavat, Bhalvat, Unmat, Bhalvat is still okay. But Jadavat, Unmatvat, Pishachvat. Because nature cannot handle. So in this yoga, the opening takes place as a descent from above. We see that described in Savitri. 
as the divine mother streams into us so they open first is this one opening then here of course depending on the pressure normally the heart center and the higher understanding will and vision they can open speech opens then later on the battle takes place in the lower vital and other areas that's the real uh, and then the physical so that's and the subconscious that's the later part but first is these aspects this is a very beautiful then question uh, some of these snippets yoga is not a thing of ideas but of inner spiritual experience as to doubts and argumentative answers to them i have long given up the practice as i found it perfectly useless yoga is not a field for intellectual argument or dissertation it is not by the exercise of the logical or the debating mind that one can arrive at a true understanding of yoga this is especially important because in the peop beginning people want to convince somebody never try to convince anyone or convert anyone this is not at all there in the path and um, people often somebody asked a question that person is saying that he doesn't believe in god uh, what should i do i said do why you have to do anything about it god doesn't want him to believe in him so what is the problem let him go his way <laughs> what is the difficulty you know you have to make everybody believe in god and and who knows what is happening inside i mean that's a different story altogether but it is best to leave each one by debating discussion and he says if the spirit of doubt could be overcome by meeting it with arguments there might be something in the demand for its removal by the satisfaction through logic but the spirit of doubt doubts for its own sake for the sake of doubt it simply uses the mind as its instrument for its particular dharma mental positions always differ moreover and it is well known that people can argue forever without one convincing the other so quarrels are useless whether in a home setting or anywhere so how do doubts get cleared there is a very beautiful phrase in the upanishad vidyanti hridaya granthi siddhyanti sarva sanshya when this door opens not of the heart is rent asunder then all doubts vanish then another one i would ask one simple question of those who would make the intellectual mind the standard and judge of spiritual experience is the divine less than mind or is it something greater is mental consciousness with its groping inquiry endless argument unquenchable doubt stiff and unplastic logic something superior or even equal to the divine consciousness or is it something inferior in its action and status if it is greater then there is no reason to seek after the divine if mind is greater why are you seeking something inferior <laughs> that's what he is saying if it is equal then spiritual experience is quite superfluous but if it is inferior it is referring to the mind how can it challenge judge make the divine look at the humor now divine stand as an accused or a witness before its tribunal summon it to appear as a candidate for admission before a board of examiners or pin it like an insect under its examining microscope this also for people who raise questions about rama sita krishna what have they not you know and sometimes they say khade ho jao ek bar ram ji ke samne then you will you know Uh, know what what that majesty is it is so easy now to read in a book something out of context even what is not there in the book and build a whole narrative i am resisting the tempt temptation to go into those stories they have been dealt elsewhere but look what shirvind is saying can the vital animal hold up as infallible the standard of its vital instincts associations and impulses and judge interpret and fathom by it the mind of man can the vital animal understand the mind of man be one percent of what rama and krishna are then you have at least a right to say something judge you cannot it's i use this in the reverse way also if one has ever to be a judge one should be really above very high in one's consciousness not otherwise only being of a very high consciousness can truly judge so of course we have judge and chief justice and me lords and all that tamasha so and then he says mind has its place 
but it means that it cannot be even the main instrument much less the authority to whose judgment all must submit itself including the divine so mind is its place it must receive from the higher truth organize the knowledge received in different forms that's what the mind can do best faith one small letter in faith the faith in spiritual things that is asked of the sadhak is not an ignorant but a luminous faith so what is an ignorant faith ignorant faith is oh i have this instantly i have prayed i will be cured and why there should be no accident in the world there should be no illness in the world this is an ignorant kind of faith not understanding what is the law of suffering and pain why why it has come into existence if that was the case then you don't need faith the divine would not have allowed it if a wisdom has allowed it there must be something which is much deeper so but ignorant faith will expect an instant miracle to order so that's what faith is that if i want a jalebi it should come from any store in the world and if somebody can do it to me that person is a master but somebody who snatches away the jalebi from my hand how can he be a guru there is that story of shurbindo when people made this puri and kathal jackfruit and they send it to shurbindo the three notorious people they actually stole the kathal jackfruit but to as was the guild they made it into a nice vegetable send it to shurbindo that normally shurbindo would just taste and send it back or sometimes he would just see a touch and send it back so now they are waiting sanctified by the divine now the kathal will come back the jackfruit nothing came nothing came after some time empty tiffin they asked what happened the lord ate all he said no he gave it to all of us all those who were in the room so nothing came down to this <laughs> this was his way of <laughs> so what is the faith needed in spiritual things a faith in light and not in darkness that eventually satyam eva jayate nanritam satyena pantha vitato devyana this is the faith regardless of appearances it is called blind by the skeptical intellect because it refuses to be guided by outer appearances or seeming facts for it looks to the truth beyond behind and does not walk on the crutches of proof and evidence so this is how faith in transformation faith in the capacity to heal oneself so this is the kind of faith that is required and there are other lots of letters on faith which probably we will take up later just one last letter so we normally think of religious life and spiritual life as synonymous people often say oh i don't believe in ritual so i am not spiritual or there are people who believe that because they are doing all the rituals and they are leading a religious life all the proscriptions and prescription therefore they are spiritual religious life is a very different order and uh, there are plenty of uh, letters but i'll just read one of them and we close with that and uh, okay one letter is it is correct religions at best modify only the surface of the nature moreover they degenerate very soon into a routine of ceremonial habitual worship and fixed dogmas so we think because i have done diyabatti my inner lamp is also lit so none of this is true and then he speaks about these three kinds of life okay one more so the spiritual life the religious life adhyatma jivan dharma jivan and the ordinary human life of which morality is a part are three quite different things and one must know which one desires and not confuse the three together the ordinary life is that of the average human consciousness separated from its true own true self and from the divine and led by the common habits of the mind life and body which are the laws of the ignorance the religious life is a movement of the same ignorant human consciousness turning or trying to turn away from the earth towards the divine but as yet without knowledge and led by the dogmatic tenets and rules of some sect or creed the religious life may be the first approach of the, to the spiritual but very often it is only a turning about in a round of rites ceremonies and practices or set ideas and forms without any issue the spiritual life on the contrary proceeds directly by a change of consciousness 
a change from the ordinary consciousness, ignorant and se separated from its true self and from God, to a greater consciousness in which one finds one's true being and comes first into direct and living contact and then into union with the divine. It's living contact. It's not a murti, vigra or anything. In fact, it's inside. It's outside also. So it's not only moko kaha dhunde bande na kashi me na kaba me. It is also kaba kashi everywhere. There is the divine distorted or manifest. That is the difference. And morality is a part of the ordinary life. Again, it uh, has its place. And one last one with which we'll stop. People often say how to find the Guru. We don't have to worry. Guru will find us. But there is a condition. Condition is that seeking should be sincere. So Shivinda says, if you have a sincere seeking to the spiritual change in your heart and soul, then you will find the way and the guide. A mere mental seeking and questioning are not enough to open the doors of the spirit. With this we finish this volume 1 and next time we will take up volume 2. Thank you.